Hello, I'm Ernest Ruffin, Managing Director of ECSMG Consulting. We're doing a, a, a documentary called Hood Economics, whereby we are interviewing different entrepreneurs in the North Greater Area to show and highlight and share with our young audience um, at the ECSMG Hip Hop Business Summit what it takes to become an entrepreneur. Today we're at the um, Health Food Herb Center, downtown Newark, talking with Clavon. Welcome. How you doing? Good things, good things. So tell us a little bit about your business. Well, this is a health food store. And basically what we've been doing uh, is healing the people in the community uh, using natural herbs and vitamins and um, just giving people a healthy alternative to how they want to deal with any diseases or discomfort they might be having. Today, health food business is a, and holistic cures is a, is a huge opportunity, but 31 years ago, what, right. what gave your father the vision 31 years ago to get into this business? Well, you know, it has a lot to do with his, his cultural background, his upbringing, being born in the Caribbean, and, you know, back and forth between the Bahamas and uh, South America, Guyana. Okay. Uh, his grandmother was a natural herb woman in the community. Okay, okay. And it just stuck with him. Right. Were you always at this location? Where'd you guys start out? Well, no, actually, his first location was in New York City. Okay. Then he was also on High Street. Right, in right. Newark. In the hood. In the hood. Right. And now he's been here in this location for, again, a little over 30 years. Okay, okay. So uh, did he tell you about the struggles of entrepreneurship and what it took to get started and, you know, how, how you may have had some difficulties in the, biz in the beginning to grow into the point where he's now where he has a steady list of customers and things like right. that? I know, well, we, we spoke about it and I watched it you okay. know, also. I mean, when we started off, I mean, you could count the products that were in the store right, okay. on, your, on your hands. And then also just being um, a black business owner in this, in this city for that many years and surviving and having all the different um, other companies that come, because this is more of a mom-pop organization. Right. So having all the other competition come up and survive all that, right, right. It's, been, it's been a challenge, but you know, he's a pioneer. And he's still standing and doing great. I mean, right. I, I'm a customer here, so, right. you know, I, I get my health food products here. And my father's a customer here. Right, right. It's so, a long time. Yeah, so, uh, so what would you share with our young audience about, you know, being an entrepreneur, taking a business from an infancy stage, growing it, and sustaining it? Well, I mean, first, I mean, look, what I would focus on is, like, you, you know, being creative and being an entrepreneur is important. Uh, especially in today's society because I don't think anyone really wants to be in a position where they're just dealing with an hourly wage or a salary or just having um, a boss dictating you know everything because you can't really uh, control your time right and you can't even control how much money you can make that's correct so it's risky being an entrepreneur but the rewards are great and I would just say that you have to stick with it you know what I mean of course you have to be consistent and very driven because most people just work a job, so they have a work a job mentality. Right. So when you become an entrepreneur, you're stepping out of that box. And um, it can be, you know, it's, it's, it's different because you got to be more responsible. What's a work a job mentality versus an entrepreneur's mentality? Well, a work a job mentality is you're really comfortable some, with someone telling you what to do and when to do it. And you can work a job and just sit, sit in the bathroom for eight hours and you're still going to get that hourly wage. Right. But if you do that as an entrepreneur, you won't get paid. So working a job mentality has a lot to do with um, someone dictating your time for you. Right. As opposed to as an entrepreneur, you have to dictate your own time. And the reward and the reward is, is great. Right. So, so you've seen firsthand how this improved your father's, your family's economic situation. Definitely. What type of improvements have you seen with the community? What has this done by improving? How, how has this entrepreneurship here improved the community on High Street and over here on Broad Street? Well, the, the, the main improvement, I would say two things. Number one, I mean, the nature of our business is healing people, right? So any community that we're in, you know, we're healing people mentally, uh, physically, spiritually. Right. Uh, so that speaks for itself. Right. But also, it's, it's also pride and, you know, the integrity. When people see black business in a black community, 
is very inspirational because you know we have like you know a lot of other cultures that do business in our communities the Asian culture um, the Spanish Hispanic and that's cool um, but when you see black people doing business in a black community it's very inspiring for the young people so that's the most important thing thanks man okay. appreciate yeah. it we're at CFO Partner Pro LLC talking with Sandra Dumas Managing Director, Global Outsourcing and Human Resource Administration, and I'm sure she'll correct me because I think I might have uh, messed up her title. Welcome, Sandra. Hi, how are you? I am well. Let me first tell you what we're doing. We're having a, um, a business summit, a hip-hop business summit, right? We're putting together a, uh, it's titled Hood Economics. And what we're trying to do is get young people involved and excited about becoming entrepreneurs controlling their own destiny, improving the economic conditions within their families and their neighborhoods. So I want to give them some real life, you know, situations, talk to real people like yourself, who's worked in corporate world, who's done whatever you've done prior to becoming an entrepreneur. So you can share that with them and tell them what it takes to become an entrepreneur, the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur, because I'm an entrepreneur and I know it's up, it's down, right. you know, and, and how, how all that works. and you know, why you chose to do this, why you continue to do this, and, you know, your outlook for the future and things they need to know. So with that, please tell us a little bit about what CFO Partner Pro LLC is all about. Well, CFO Partner Pro um, LLC is actually, it's a subsidiary of um, KBL. KBL is um, an in is actually a CPA firm in New York. Okay. has office on Wall Street and one in Midtown Manhattan. Okay. Um, KBL, is KBL black owned? Yes, a minority owned okay. company, um, CPA firm. We're talking about 70 partners and about a resource pool of 500 CPAs. That's pretty big. So um, CFO Partner Pro is a practice group that came out of that company. Okay. So we are a subsidiary of theirs. Okay. Um, basically how it was historically, um, CPA firms on my end of the business, the practice I'm building is the um, outsource HR and payroll administration. Okay. I act as a back office in terms of um, payroll. I operate the same as a paycheck, okay. and an ADP in terms of offering the same level of service. Wow. And it's actually cheaper. So because explain what it is you do as a back office, you know, ADP type company. Well, for outsource payroll, if you have a company, a small to medium sized company doing up to 60 million in revenue, what we'll do is we'll um, act as the back office and actually do your payroll for you. We process your payroll, pay your employees, we gather all the information from you to, to operate in that manner, okay. and um, we file your quarterly taxes, we'll file the taxes for, for your, um, your employees. Okay. And um, make sure we do your year in processing, which is um, issuing W 2s out to your employees as well to enable them to file their taxes on an annual basis with the IRS. Full service, full service uh, accounting, payroll type functions. Mm -hmm. We handle garnishments if you have garnishments that are required, um, payroll deductions for um, medical insurance, things like that. Tell us how you, Sandra Dumas, got started in this business. What did you do prior to this? Oh, I was with Merrill Lynch. Okay. I, were, I was in corporate America, okay. and I worked with Merrill Lynch for 22, almost 22 years as an HR professional. Okay. And I worked, actually, my clients were Merrill Lynch employees, okay, so gotcha. I was more in the private sector. Right. What I wanted to do is I now wanted to service the community, okay. small to medium-sized businesses. So I was given the opportunity to come on board and build this practice from the ground up in terms of um, the HR piece and in terms of the um, payroll piece. Okay, okay. So I, I began to leverage everything I've learned at Merrill Lynch gotcha. and bring it into, into, the, you know, into the public in dealing with these companies. Not only do we do this, we also like to do seminars and workshops to also teach people very interesting. And that have small businesses, how to have longevity in their businesses, because for the most part, let's be honest, a lot of people don't know how to do a break-even analysis on their own business to stay in business. So we do workshops that will teach them how to do this. Great. So it's better for us and it's better for them in terms of business. So how did you find the transition from corporate world, the corporate world, getting a paycheck every two weeks? versus becoming an entrepreneur? It is a difficult transition, but it's worth it in the end. The end, I see...